Hey everyone, it's Mark Sargent, and this is Flat Earth Q and A emails number sixty four. <clears throat> Excuse me, where you email me your Flat Earth questions to msargent twenty three at comcast dot net. That's m s a r g e n t twenty three at comcast dot net, and I will do my best to answer them. Surprising no one, this first email is called Flat Earth. Mark, I have been following Flat Earth for a year conspiracy for a lifetime it was long i was a long time holdout on apollo and nasa due to personal connection i met neil armstrong isaac asimov and r bradbury and many others as a boy in the early 1970s i must admit flat earth is intriguing i met in alaska and was a personal friend of norman vaughn an antarctica explorer slash dog musher with admiral bird as a young soldier I was a fire direction control officer for Lance Nuclear Missile System. I did the trajectory math as well as programmed the launch computers. Never counted for curvature despite serious implications of wrong detonation coordinates. I've had a colorful and blessed life wearing many hats. I've been as high as 42,000 feet in commercial and military aircraft multiple times. Never saw the slightest curve. I've always been a questioner of the status quo. I'm highly trained as a computer control and command electronic and electrical technology. I have traveled within the Arctic Circle and studied movement of the sun and the moon. <clears throat> as a young boy, I was operating advanced state-of-the-art planetarium under supervision of NASA, university astronomer. I still take my kids to the same planetarium for modern shows. As a young man, I studied history, the classics, and political science at Ohio State University in the honors program and, mi and minored in philosophy and ethics. As an adult, I have studied basic piloting navigation as well as ocean sailing navigation. In short, the older I get, the more I question everything I have ever been taught. I have become most disappointed in my boyhood astronaut heroes. I have become a total non-believer in NASA. Flat Earth has many valid scientific points that make a lot of sense. Right or wrong, I admire anyone who questions things. I cannot say I believe Flat Earth without reservation. I can say that I definitely question everything about heliocentric geospherical model currently being indoctrinated into public psyche. My eyes and mind are open to truth. May God reveal it to those who are worthy. Hope you are real, not another disinformation shill or worse, controlled opposition. Humanity deserves truth. We all deserve to understand the nature of our own reality. Best, <clears throat> Ron Perrin. Thank you, Ron. Nice email. This one's called Reaction to Russell Brand's Behavior in Your Interview of October of 2017. Dear Mr. Sergeant uh, Dash Mark, it gives me great pleasure to write this email. I've always thought Russell Brand is a very intelligent person, and I still do believe it. However, the way he broke into song and wouldn't allow you to speak of your theories, which let's not forget was the actual reason for the interview, just goes to show <clears throat> excuse me, that Russell Brand has been bought by the powers that be. He is just another puppet of the masters. They have realized that he has a large enough following to help influence the masses away from the truth. I, for one, believe wholeheartedly in the flatter theory, and since accepting this theory as my own belief, and dare I say it, reality, I have found more inner peace than ever before. I finally feel I have a satisfactory answer to all my childhood questions. At this stage, I won't be trying to convince other people of the theory, as they will only try to shoot it down by stating science has proved everything. My personal theory on science is scientists are given financial grants to help create illusions to steer the masses clear of the truth. And when the masses no longer need brainwashing, the grant is stopped. Everyone is available for a price. Best wishes. Oh boy. How do you pronounce that name? G-R-A-E-M-E. Gramey. Gramey. Thank you, Gramey. Wherever you are. This one's called Flat Earth Questions. Mark, when NASA visited the moon, they left light reflecting matrix on the surface that you can shoot a laser at and they reflect the light so you can measure the distance. Anyone with the equipment can do this. So how was this done? Yeah, it's, it's not. <laughs> it's a complete lie. I still have trouble believing the flat earth model with so many things that work with a globe model, mainly from the moon's effect on the earth and detectable radio light waves from space and the many space programs. Oh, wow. Well. Are you ready? Are you really <clears throat> to believe that this dome projects X-rays, microwaves, UV, IR, etc.? And why? 
couldn't we be on the globe? The globe is much bigger than we think. But it's very possible. Uh, then your flat earth could be just be a small fenced off part of the globe. Yes, also true. Still a lie though. I used to work with satellites, so I find it hard to believe in such a small dome as you describe. Yes, there are satellites above your head beaming down TV, radio, GPS, some fixed in orbit, some moving over a thousand miles an hour. You can't tell me there is not... Or can you? Yes, I can. There, not, nothing is what it appears to be. I have lots of other questions, probably a million to discount Globe Earth. <clears throat> Sorry, guys, I'm, I'm a little under the weather. Uh, but I can't think how to word them, but I wanted to get your email archived. I'll get back to you. Thanks. That's from James Doble. Cool. Uh, this one's called Zoom In on Sun. Mark, could not someone zoom back in on the sun as it disappears over the horizon in the same manner that they do boats? If one were to stand on the westernmost beach at sunset or zoom in on it from the easternmost beach just before daybreak. Thoughts, Ben? Yeah, you're absolutely right, Ben. And, and you can look at this. There, there are several videos along these lines. All you have to do is type in Flat Earth Sunrise or Flat Earth Sunset or just Flat Earth Sun and you will see some of these videos. And what he's talking about is if a boat goes over the horizon and you can bring it back by zooming in, shouldn't you do that? Couldn't you do that with anything that hits the horizon like the sun? Yes. Yes, you can. Oh, you know what? Somebody should try that with planes. If a plane goes off into the distance and we don't see it anymore. So if, if anyone's got an airport near a body of water like that, that'd be kind of fun. This one's called a thoughtful pick. Hi, Mark. I've been listening to your YouTube show and enjoy it. I'm a Bible believer and recently found out about Flat Earth. Everything makes so much more sense now. Thank you. Here's a picture I've made to illustrate what the Earth should like look like from the moon, which puts into question the authenticity of the NASA photos we have all seen. I believe that what is called modern science, evolution, Big Bang, is part of the plan of Satan to enslave humans. Thank you for exposing the lies. Sincerely, Tyler. Thanks, Tyler. This one's called Summary. Mark, my name is Ramon. I've been doing my research alongside my wife, Ashley, and we strongly believe on the Flat Earth Theory. We've been at it for months now, starting on the moon landings, moved on to 9-11, and led to Flat Earth. We are on board. My wife stumbled onto this NASA document that she got from NASA, and yep. Yeah, it's the Dryden PDF. Uh, take a look at the summary. It definitely caught our attention. I don't know who else to share this with. I'm a subscriber to your YouTube channel, and we feel you're an individual that can make something of it. Uh, if it's even something to speculate on, if you would be so kind, please take a look and get back to me. By the way, great video on Flat Earth Clues. One of my favorites. Thank you. That's from Ramon. Yep, I will take a look at that and get back to him. This one's called Reaching Out. Hello, Mark. Thanks for the awesome videos. I was hoping to tell you a bit about me and pick your brains. Please reach out to me when you have time. Respectfully, Soufli. Now, the only <laughs> the only hesitation I have there, and I might write them back anyway, is that they're so generic in here that they may have just been tr um, doing a quick fishing expedition on YouTube because it doesn't actually mention Flat Earth anywhere in this. And there's an Asian ref, I'm sorry, there's multiple numbers, one from United Arab Emirates, one is a USA number. Yeah, I may write back just to see what's going on there, but I'm out of my hopes on that one. This one's called Question. Dear Mark, I am generally sympathetic of the idea that the Earth might indeed not be a globe. To me, at least one question remained unanswered, though. There seems to be nonstop, oh, here we go. Non-stop flights between SCL and AKL. Yep, that would be yeah, in Auckland, New Zealand. Yeah, These flights apparently take approximately 12 hours. They are operated by LATAM Airlines. Obviously, it does not go altogether with the concept of flat earth. Locating <coughs> excuse me, uh, the southern tip of South America and New Zealand or opposite sides of the disc. I would greatly appreciate your comment. Thank you in kind regards, Stefan. Yes, for anybody that brings up those flights, that's why I made Clue 9 from the Flat Earth Clues, which says you can't prove the route because the GPS coordinates drop off. There is no latitude and longitude. This one's called Greetings from the Flat Plane Commonly Called Earth. Hello, Mark. I've been researching heavily into the esoteric or hidden history of the world, namely American history, but world as well for a little more than a decade now. The first few years, I thought I figured something out. Boy, were my eyes open for the first time. And I realized that 
nearly everything I was taught my entire life was a fairy tale, a lie. Then my library grew, and the more books I consumed, the more I came to see that I knew very little. The lies were bigger than anyone could imagine. The Illuminati, the Enlightened Ones, the secret rulers of this world empire, all of it. The Zionists, the Jesuits, the Masons, Rosicrucians, the Committee of 300, the New World Order, the Moon, a giant hoax, the Federal Reserve, debt slave system, a farce, American education, but the world not a globe? I admit, like most other stories, I scoffed and laughed at the flat earth theory for a little while as I kept popping up on YouTube searches and recommends. I just wanted to extend my gratitude to yourself and those like you who have put out the material and offered their efforts in exposing this globular conspiracy. I agree entirely that scientism is hiding God. This is way bigger than many will realize or understand. <clears throat> I've had several YouTube channels terminated for exposing the truth. My current one is the Freedom Ministry, but I've been pretty inactive as I'm raising and supporting a young family. Kudos, Mark. Please keep up the great work. I can now say with confidence that the earth is now a sphere. Uh, no, I'm sorry. He should have said not. Uh, the earth is not a sphere, but a flat plane with a dome or firmament above, uh, just as it outlines in the book of Genesis. I will keep listening and following along YouTube to all you put out. The expert series you have done with all those from the military and the other industries is amazing and really helped open my eyes to this conspiracy and its ramifications. I realize that this is all under wraps at the highest level of the military industrial complex. It looks like the Heg Hegelian dialectic as in full swing on the internet regarding flat earth. Those with eyes to see and ears to hear will certainly receive the word. Peace and love, Godspeed, Chris Switzer. This one's called, it's called Earth. <clears throat> Hello, Mark. Thanks for your documentary compilation on YouTube about the flat Earth. I am a forensics investigator with some time to spare to investigate the shape of the world. The only bias I hold right now is that I feel like the world is both round and flat. I would like to humbly request that you share any of your investigation files and the subject matter with me for another objective look and opinion. Kind regards. Uh, Lawrence Kazizi, and he has a whole bunch of letters next to his name. Yeah, you know what? I may have to get a hold of that guy just to see what he's going for. This one's called Ponderations. Mark, enjoyed your video, the one with the clues. I will watch it again. Maybe my questions are answered in there somewhere, and I just missed it the first go round. Meanwhile, I'll take you up on your invitation to email. My main question in mind when I clicked on your video was not so much about whether Earth is flat or round, but more about why anyone would want to fool us into thinking it's one way or the other. What are the motivations on either side? At the end, you said we need to make people see it's flat because it will cause people to be nicer if they think someone is watching. That actually sounds a bit lame to me. I, I could be more tactful here, but I get the feeling you can handle straightforwardness. Do you think people were not nicer when they believed the earth was flat? Do you think people now do not think someone's watching? Did I completely miss your point? No, you didn't. Anyway, I still don't get why they want us, want us particularly and certainly to believe the earth is round and spinning through space. How does that serve them? Also wondered about aliens. How do they get uh, through the bubble over flat earth? Or do you think there is nothing except flat earth and what's on it? Which, of course, could include what would seem like aliens to us, I suppose. Interested in your thoughts about Antarctica. There could be a lot of reasons for it to be off limits. People believe things like their entrances to Middle Earth. Their bomb shelters for the elite. Secret military ops. Good point, though. Pretty hard to explore that unless you run the world. Well, that's, here, that's a start, I guess. Thanks for thinking and posting from Dorothy. Thank you, Dorothy. This one's called Please Read. Survival Guide. Mark? Question mark? <laughs> was listening and just heard there are only 10 more survival guides. No, I, I was totally kidding. It's electronic. You, you have as many as you want. Don't want to miss out. Hope I'm in time. <laughs> but Oh, I see what he did there. But seriously, I wouldn't. If you don't mind sending me the file, thanks. That's from Braxton the Fourth. So, yeah, if anyone wants a survival guide, it's called Empty Shelves. It's only about two megs. I will shoot it to you in an email. All you have to do is send an email to msergeant23 at comcast.net and just put survival guide somewhere in the title or the beginning of the email. If you put it at the end of the email, I may not catch it until I actually read the email in its entirety. Sometimes it takes a while. 
This one is also called Survival Guide. Mark, listening as I type this, thanks for your what you do. Can I please get a copy of the Survival Guide? Thank you, Jake. Yep, I sent it to Jake as well. This one's called Weather Radar Proves Flat Earth. Mark, listen in. So in Australia, our radar goes out to 512 kilometers from each station on the ground. You can see this here. And he sends a uh, link to that. So the rain is under the clouds. So 512 kilometers is 300 miles. That sounds about right. 300 times 300 is 90,000 times 8 inches is 720 thousand inches divided by 12 is 60,000 feet. No clouds reach this high, none that drop rain. Rain radars prove flat earth. Nice. It's good. So what he's saying is because they can they can check rain out at a, at a long distance with uh, with radar that that proves flat earth. Awesome. Thanks Dave. Good stuff. This one's called Flat Earth Music and Flat Earth Surveyor. Hi, my name is Adrian Marine. Yes, it's okay to say that on air. Thank you for letting me know after I read it. Uh, I'm a surveyor and a musician and also a flat earther. I've been a subscriber for a while now. And between you and Rob Skiba, it didn't take long until I was getting in screaming fights with my father, who is also a surveyor and musician. Over Apollo 11 and Bible verses about the biblical earth to arguing about eight inches per mile squared. In any ways, I have written and recorded a hard rock metal song inspired by you. And of course, the Flat Club. And I've been in the process of recording and mixing it down for the community to listen to and pass around. It's called Fish Eyed. Assuming you're interested, I will send you the track tomorrow. And if you dig it, maybe talk about it Tuesday on the show. <sighs> Again, it I takes me a while to get to emails. I'll try to call in if I can. I'm, all, I'm also an instrument man on a surveying crew where I use a laser rangefinder to take measurements, distances, and elevation. Accurate down to the second of a degree and would love to talk about it and how we are told to use curvature formulas even though I daily do the math on the job that is showing no observable or definable curve, if anything, showing a remarkably flat model that we are required by law to measure accurately to the thousandth of a fout, fout, F-O-U-T, Anyways, Mark, get back to me as I uh, and as I always keep it flat, brother. Thanks, man. I will. This one's called Flat Earth Map. Hi, Mark. I'm a flat earther. My problem is that I have a friend who is a seaman, a crew from a big cargo ship that sails from Chile to Japan and vice versa. He said they follow a globe map and it's accurate. It takes only one month to travel from Chile to Japan. <laughs> only one month. That's a long time on a boat. I want to hear your opinion on this. I don't know how to defend my flat earth map. Thanks, Luigi. Uh, did he say anything? He said, um, contact me. If you're listening to this, Luigi, yeah, I need more details. Because if what I need to know what globe map they're using. You just can't say globe map. There's a lot of projections out there for, for globe map. <coughs> I will make it through this, I, this show, I swear to God. Uh, this one's called New Camera Canon PowerShot SX530HS. Bro, best poor man's high-speed low-drag camera. 120x digital zoom, 50x standard zoom. Telling you, bro, I'm hitting the road next month to measure Texas. Wow. That's from Joseph Moreno. So it's the Canon PowerShot SX530HS. Thank you for the recommendation. This one's called question. It's just three question marks. Oh, I got you. Mark, who do you think built it? Nick. Uh, who do I think built this world? T take your pick. Either uh, an advanced civilization or the divine. It's got to be one of the two. It's all, it's all it can be. So was it God or did God subcontract out the work? And if you guys have been listening to me for a while, you would have known that saying even before I said it. This one's called TLA. Uh, Mark, frequently lauded as truth. Oh, I see. The the whole flat earth. Uh, Earth's allegedly rotund. Alleg wow. Okay. So the acronym. So if you take flat earth and you take the letters and you turn it into an acronym, flat he's doing as frequently frequently lauded as truth and earth he, he changed it to earth's alleged rotundity tames heliocentricity wow heliocentricity wow that is a mouthful chip thank you for that <coughs> this one's called flat earth for, flat earth from israel mark shalom and peace my name is johanan 
I'm listening to all your videos and they are a blessing. A few months ago, I heard about Flat Earth and since then the discussion at work and in family are growing. Would you send me please the survival guide? I want to learn more. May Jehovah bless you. Thanks from Illinois. I don't know if I sent him the survival guide, so I put that in my pile of survival guides to send. And this one is actually called Survival Guide. Uh, Mark, just seen your video 59 Q&A. Please send me the guide. Thanks, Nate. Very welcome for that, Nate. And this one's called Moon. Mark, thanks for all your work. I especially appreciated your Flat Earth Clues. Something that has had a lasting effect on my perception of the world around me. And thanks to Rob Skiba for pointing me in that direction. My question concerns the moon and its appearance, either on a flat earth or globe, and whether it is a flat or globe itself. As I watched the moon rising over the Dead Sea the other night, it occurred to me that I was seeing the same face on the horizon that someone in Asia would be seeing as the moon would be directly overhead at that moment. On a flat earth, I would be... <coughs> Excuse me. I should be seeing a side view of the moon... Uh, but even on a globe, I should see more of the leading edge. I don't. Holographic moon? Thanks, Mike. Yeah, maybe. Sure. I mean, I, I do think there's a massive projection system happening up there, so why wouldn't the moon be part of it? Why not? This one's called Parents of Children. Mark, I have watched many of your videos and appreciate all the work you've done to help enlighten and educate the masses about our flat earth. One topic that I have not seen addressed by yourself or anyone else is the dilemma of raising children who are being taught the globe lies. I don't want my children to be ridiculed for their beliefs, so I hesitate to teach them the truth. Would be very interested if this subject was extensively reviewed. Best, Jeff. P.S. I tried to register on your website, but never received an email confirmation. Uh, yeah, if, if anyone's trying to register at MarkSargent.com, I'm no longer involved with that website. So if you already are signed up for MarkSargent.com, you might want to get out of it because I am no longer part of it. That one, that one was done by an outside producer and uh, just hasn't lived up to what I thought would be. This one's called, Hey, You Might Like This. Newest video I just uploaded. Hope you enjoy. Regards. And that's from Josh. And it's called... <laughs> Conversation with a SpaceX employee. This video is no longer available due to a copyright claim by Storyful. Well, thank you for that, Josh. And this one's called Flat Earth Q&A Coast to Coast. Hey, Mark, could you send me both your interviews from Coast to Coast? Thanks. Yep. If anyone wants those, all you have to do is make an email and title it that because I am not allowed for copyright reasons to put up my interviews that I did on Coast to Coast. One was with George Norrie. One was with one of the backup hosts. And I've got them, I've got the raw audio files on my machine, so I'm, I'm more than happy to send them to you guys if you want them. Just let me know. If you, Unless you're absolutely tired of, of listening to me do interviews this one's called you versus nasa it's a quote a deceitful character causes grief but an experienced man can turn the tables on him so it is written so it is stay prudent and manly my friend as all that is concealed will be disclosed robert don in los angeles thank you robert this one's called Fitness Tracker Secret U.S. Bases in Antarctica. Mark, watch the video off air. Fitness trackers are accidentally giving the location of classified U.S. military bases. Yeah, yeah they're absolutely right. So yeah, there, there's there's technology. We create this cutting edge stuff, and it uses it's it, the data can be used in different ways. In this case, they found out the people that were wearing their Fitbits because it basically acts as, acts as a mini GPS device. Um, that, that it, people were forgetting to turn them off when they're in the military. And so we were finding bases all over the place, including Antarctica, which is very, very interesting. This one's called Survival Guide. Hi, Mark. Recently binged on your YouTube videos for hours, well into the wee hours. Very interesting. Thanks for all you discover and share and for the inspiration to go deeper from Lori. P.S. Survival Guide, please. Thanks. It was good that she began it and ended it with that just in case I forgot which I didn't. This one's called Blind Flat Earth or the Throne of God. Hello, Mark. I'm a 22 years old and went blind at the age of 20. 
Before losing my vision, I was always so amazed by the earth and space, but that was the problem. I was too amazed. I was attending college for mechanical engineering when I lost my sight, taking courses such as physics and also astronomy as an elective. My college astronomy class was taught by my physics professor who had their doctorate degree in some sort of physics. I have to say that that class was one big joke, especially now I know the things I do and look back at it. I was introduced to Flat Earth, but a friend about a year ago, and just like everybody else, thought it was crazy. Once I started doing my own research, I could not stop, and everything made sense. I still, to this day, cannot stop researching to find the truth. I'm a lifelong Christian and truly believe they are hiding God from us. Tonight, I was listening to the subject matter on the air traffic controller as well as the flight instructor. I would like to consider myself as somewhat intelligent, and when the air traffic controller started talking about his paper... I was intrigued. So if you please send me the throne of God that he wrote, I would very much appreciate it. I was just uh, seeking the truth about our world and where we live just like the rest of us and just and do believe that the Bible has the answers. Thank you, Justin Holland, the blind bodybuilder on YouTube. Thank you for that. Awesome. <coughs> Excuse me. I will make it through this. I've only got 30 minutes left. This one's called, We've Seen Planes Flying Higher Than the Sun. And there's a video that literally called that. And Tina just wrote me to let me know there's a video called that. We've Seen Planes Flying Higher Than the Sun. All right. I'll check it out if you get a chance. This one's called, The SPS-49 Radar Can Detect Targets Out to 256 Miles. The SPY-1B Can Track 100 Targets at the Same Time the Size of a Golf Ball. That was sent by Joseph. Thank you. He also sent another one called GSR. And so look that up if you get a chance. <laughs> I'm not going to open up that link at the moment. This one's called Coast to Coast Interview. Mark, may I please have the audio recording? Thanks in advance. Devin, you bet I will send you the Coast to Coast Interview. This one's called The Moon and a whole bunch of question marks. Oh, hi, Mark. I've asked you a question about the moon before and now have a new question. Do you suppose or think that the craters on the moon are not because of asteroids, but are blasts from ancient civilizations trying to get off off the dome? And that's why it looks like that. Hmm. Interesting. No, I think they're just decorations. That's it. The craters in the moon literally are just decorative. And I think this, and that's from Frank from Houston. I think that because they uh, the craters are perfect. They're, they're all... Uh, spherical, or I'm sorry, they're all round. They're not spherical, which means they were coming in at 90 degree angles. And if they're all coming in at 90 degree angles, then where are the ones where they aren't? You know, statistics say that you're going to have some coming in at shallow angles and, and skidding. I mean, it should look like that moon should look like target practice. And it looks like somebody just decorated it with craters, perfect circular craters. So there you go. This one's called what? More Neil deGrasse Tyson nonsense. Hi, Mark. My name is Chris Watt, and I'm writing you from Colorado Springs, Colorado. I stumbled onto Flat Earth a couple years ago and have been voraciously researching channels like yours, Jaronism, Skiba, <laughs> Skiba with two Bs, D-I-T-R-H, Dubay, etc. ever since. I wanted to send you what I believe to be priceless Neil deGrasse Tyson clip that I haven't seen any of the heavy hitters address. He essentially states that the NFL field goals can be affected by Earth's rotation, thus contradicting the idea that we are held within the globe's atmospheric gravitational magic. In other words, based on his own logic, we should clearly be able to raise up in a helicopter and simply wait for the Earth to rotate beneath us. I just think you will have a field day with this one. Here's the link. Keep up the great work. Sincerely, Chris Watt. Thank you, Chris. This one's called They Hide God with the Biggest Lies Ever, Flat Earth Clues. Hey, Mark, I am currently enjoying the video, but wondering why all the links are removed from the description. Thanks, Brandon. Um, the reason why all the original links were moved from the description is because I was making so many videos. And remember, I was the first time I was really uploading anything to YouTube that when I had to make changes... I could, it was, wasn't, it wasn't feasible anymore to do it piecemeal. I mean, I'm up to almost 1100 videos now. So when I make a change to a description, I generally change all of them simultaneously. I make a generic description for every video with contact information and my mission statement and stuff like that. So as far as the links go, again, they're not, they're not super secret links. Just do your own research. That's all I can tell you there. 
I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't get that many emails about the, the, the broken links or the links that just don't exist anymore. This one's called SpaceX Steel Strange World Tonight <coughs> Show with Rocket Launch. SpaceX launch is the be- biggest space event since who knows when. <laughs> nice. Yeah, SpaceX. Don't I, I don't even want to get started with this one. This one's called Flat Earth Question. Mr. Sergeant, so after watching Flat Earth Clues Part 9, which deals with Southern Hemisphere flights, I decided to watch for myself. It seems that they have addressed this issue now. Today I was looking at planefinder.net, and there are two flights over the Indian Ocean, uh, Qantas 64 and A64, Johannesburg to Sydney, 5,500 and something miles, and, sorry, uh, SA South African Airlines, Perth to Johannesburg. These were the only two flights over the Indian and South Pacific Oceans, though. I'm retiring from the Navy next year and seriously considering considering flying to Santiago, Sydney, and Johannesburg and fly these flights. These are destinations I would love to go for a vacation anyway, so I could definitely knock out two birds with one stone. If you can't tell this stuff is seriously bothering me and all I want to know is the truth, I don't want to speculate, I just want truth. The way I see it is this is the only way I can know for myself. Thanks again for what you do, uh, Ver. He doesn't actually give his name. Oh, no, it's Daniel. Thanks, Daniel. This one's called Russia and China at the North Pole. And if it ever opens... Okay, Mark, with all those resources at the Southern Rim, why are they fighting over the middle? And there's a CNBC article in China battle U.S. in race to control the Arctic. Pfft. Whatever. That's just politics. That isn't a real fight. This one's called Flat Earth Proven Wrong. SpaceX live stream Tesla car from space. It gives you an idea of how long I've, I've, I've got these emails open. Uh, looks like SpaceX finally listened to you and put GoPros on the Tesla car in space and streaming it. Do I win the Flat Earth contest money now? <laughs> Funny. Uh, SpaceX. So awful. I hate them so much. Not as much as I hate the Eskimos, but still. Uh, This one's called Confirmation. Dear Mark, I'm watching your video. They are hiding God with the greatest lie ever and got conviction. So just asking if you can clarify me as that no one has ever gone to the moon. It was a lie. Was it a lie or please advise? Thank you and have a wonderful day. Cheers, you Baki. Yep, no one's ever gone to the moon. (coughs) Forgive my coughing, guys. Again, I had a little bit of a fever and I do not get sick often. But... uh, uh, Got this, and and I'm just now getting over it. So, but I wanted to do an email show anyway. Keep myself busy. This one's called Mark. Is the moon seen the same from one continent as another while in the same hemisphere? Example: North America versus South America. I saw one YouTube channel where someone was trying to debunk flat Earth theory. They talked about the moon being visible in its exact same parallax on both continents. They then they spoke about how this was impossible from a flat earth perspective because of the viewing angles that would be involved. I can get you the link if you want. I'd really get like to get your thoughts about this. Thanks for all your hard work and insightful information. Keep up the work and God bless you. Sincerely, Mark Ivy. Welcome, Mark. This one's called Flat Earth Marathon, Twitter on Earth Day. Hi, Mark. I thought of an idea to get attention and I would like to have your take on it. Maybe share. I have already created a Facebook event and a Flat Earth group. Please continue your awesome work, man. One Flat Earther from Montreal, Canada, Carl. And the event, it's going to be Earth Day 2018. Uh, it was gonna, it's like a research Flat Earth thing. Post all day if possible, once an hour. There's something we should repeat every year. Hope this works. It's flat, guys. Invite friends. Stay safe. Research flat Earth. Cool. Cool. Hope it works. 2018 is going to be a big year. Uh, How many guns does the U.S. need to combat an enemy? Two. One to shoot and one to sell the enemy to shoot back. Uh, hey, Mark. I bought, that, literally, that was the title. Uh, hi, Mark. I've always been interested in conspiracies, the usual 9-11 and JFK, the less usual like celebrity deaths and clones and so on. I was recently watching a Nikola Tesla video on YouTube <coughs> Excuse me, and got a little disheartened when I heard him talk about planets and other things conflicting with me and yours flat earth beliefs. Tesla was fascinated by numbers, the numbers 369 in particular. Tesla, quote, if you only knew the magnificence of the numbers 369, then you would have the key to the universe. Could these numbers be the basis of a simulation similar to the Matrix? Clearly, the dude was a genius. Just wondering if you have any thoughts regarding Tesla's stance on what we live on. Also, 
then some interesting videos documenting glitches in the matrix any input on glitches in the matrix would be great to hear keep up the good work i got your six that's a military thing that's stephen calf out of ireland and yeah i i'm if i'm not mistaken tesla said that this world was a realm uh, it was a it was a big giant machine in in lack lack of a better term, and he he remember he was a big machine guy, big nuts and bolts guy, and I think that's what he saw. This one's called copy of Dale's book. Hi Mark, I'm very new to the flat Earth theory. I'm a pilot in training, and a few months ago, I asked one of my instructors an honest question: When do we dip down to correct for the curve of the Earth? An innocent question, and he said, "What are you talking about? We just fly level." I never gave it a second thought. But as I finished ground school, I never thought saw anything mentioned in the calculation for the curvature of spinning of the Earth. Being an amateur astronomer and professional photographer, I just thought it was weird that we didn't have to do any calculations. Anyway, last week I came across your videos on YouTube, and then I googled curvature of the Earth and calculating airplane out altitude. And a flat Earth video came up amongst others, and I listened to it, and then another, and then eventually you came on. And yes, there is definitely something afoot. I just wanted to thank you for the info, and also wanted to ask if I can get a copy of Dale's, Dale the Air Traffic Controller Guy's book. Thank you, JP. Yep. And I sent it to him. <coughs> this one's called Good Fix to a Pricey Problem. And I've got the spinning wheel of pause happening. Mark, Elon simply gave us a lower budget spacewalk with a dummy and a car. No need to pay expensive NASA actors anymore. That's from Toe. I don't think that's his real name, but that's okay. We'll let that slide. And yeah, you're absolutely right. And Elon was doing stuff on the cheap. Can you fake space on the cheap? Well, you can try, but it's not going to go very well. And that's that was the result. This one's called Shout Out to Ryan in Pittsburgh. Mark, I heard you read two emails on your email shows from Ryan in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Sounds like he was hoping to connect with some people, and I'm just up the road from him in Erie, Pennsylvania. I will be starting a meetup soon that might be worth the drive for him. Please pass along my email address to him or send me his. Thanks, JJ from Erie. P.S. All the snow melted off and we are now having a pretty average winter. Stay flat, my friend. And his email address is... Crap. I can't tell what it is, actually. Jonathan Janicki. Uh, what happens if I forward it? Let's see if I can forward this email. Usually I can read it if I can forward it. Sometimes it doesn't show up. Come on. Really? Hmm. I'm going to have to come back to this one. Sorry, guys. Sorry for the delay on that one. This one's called Survival Guide. Mark would love to pursue, pursue. Actually, that's funny because I think that's a, it, also an anagram for peruse. Peruse your survival guide you published. Also, although living in a metropolitan area, not sure if it would be applicable. It absolutely is applicable in a me metropolitan area. My guide does not have you going out to the woods and eating bugs and trying to trap rabbits. It is sitting there in the thick of things trying to survive what do you think respectfully robert and yeah i sent it to him this one's called error correction uh if i can pop it up mark oh dear i just realized i left out the 23 part of your email address so that you have probably not been receiving all the letters i have sent to you for the past two years <laughs> uh. <laughs> wow I don't think I would have even admitted that in an email that you've been sending me emails for two years. Didn't realize. Wait, how did you? Even, oh, because they would have gone somewhere. Yeah, if you would have left out the 20 or 3, somebody else would have been receiving my emails for two years. If so, let me know and I'll forward them all to you. I'm rewriting this one just to make sure you got it. My friend, I've really tried to ignore this little error of yours, but cannot refrain any longer. To hear such perfection of speech marred by a constant. Oh, boy, here we go. Somebody's going to pick apart my diction. A uh, constantly mispronounced word is an affront to my ears. Here it is. Picture. Pronounced picture, not picture. Hey, okay. I also learned from a TV cameraman that a photographic... Wow. That a photograph should never be called a picture. It is more correct to say photo instead. You know what? I will use that. Please know that my suggestion is strictly meant as a guide to aid you in your endeavor to perfect your knowledge of proper speech in its most perfect form and order. And you've been sending me 
emails for two years about this. Wow. Learning new words and how they're pronounced is something I practice often. When I'm reading and come across a word I don't recognize, I stop, I look it up. Uh, if I speak with a fair vocabulary, it is because of this practice. I really enjoy listening to your Flat Earth Q&A emails. Listening to you read the letters is far easier for me to tolerate than hearing the callers like Mark from New York ramble on about meaningless topics or, oh, come on, don't pick on Mark from New York or about how they are now flat earthers as if this is going to have some major impact on their mundane lives. Oh, I think it does. Please, personally, I don't see how you can stand it. I sincerely applaud you for your tolerance and patience with the peanut gallery. Eh, the peanut gallery is, he really helps, believe it or not. Another note, I read your empty shelves guide a couple months ago. I just Googled it PDF and it came up. Huh, I didn't know the empty shelves flat earth thing was, was out there. It was immensely amusing. I too foresee a similar, similarly dismal future for the wicked. I love the guns and the zombies. Your remarks about the ill-advised choice of a bolt-action rifle, I believe it was, to use as protection. Damn right, do not use a bolt-action rifle. When the crazed neighborhood mob is breaking down your door, were hilarious. Gauging by the number of survival guide requests you get, it would seem that the people, probably unconsciously, see this same future for themselves. The masses, in truth, are so very susceptible to suggestion. Poor creatures. Take care, your friend, Stella. Thank you, Stella. That, that email made my day. And, and if it was towards the end of the show, I would actually end on that. Uh, yeah, if you want, you can send me the other emails. If, you, if you're listening to this, I didn't receive any of them, obviously. I mean, if you typed in just msargent at comcast.net <coughs> or any other numbers, msargent1 through 22, they would have gone to somebody, completely different people. So if you still got them, yeah, send them to me. I don't know if I'll read them all on the show, but you never know. Okay, this one's called New BuzzFeed Vid. And it's on Facebook.com. Hey, Mark, check it out. I haven't seen this BuzzFeed video actually giving logical reasons for why the moon landing never took place. Thanks, Braxton. Yep. Yep. Checked it out. And BuzzFeed, I, I think we got to them, which is irony. There, there you have it, where they came after us at the, at the conference and we're going to turn it into like a cult piece. And they didn't. They, they didn't do it. So. All right. This one's called Just for Laughs. Mark, greetings from Thailand. Keep up the good work. And it's some pictures. I'll view those later. This one's called Green Screen and Tesla Video, not Spam. Hey, mate, thought you would get this out there quick. There's a green screen grid in the Tesla car video. Yep, yep, I've seen it. I know. I, I don't know if it's a green screen or if it's just a, uh, a, a, a shot that was taken inside the capsule that was out of place and that they ended up correcting later. This one's called C7 States, hundreds of miles away. Mark, Lord have mercy. Please check this out. Freaking hilarious, bro. They admit it, but they make sure they mention the curve. So even though the earth curves, they try to tell us we can see around it. Huh? And the, the article is called C7 States on Lookout Mountain. So you guys can check that out when you get a chance. That's from Joseph. This one's called Two More Flatter Songs for Your Playlist. Hi, Mark. Zane has cranked out two more eye-opening flatter songs for your playlist. Brother. Garth Brooks and Dire Straits are now flat earthers. Enjoy them, sir. They're not really flat earthers. What he did was he, he created new songs and used their, their music as tracks. One's called Friends in Flat Places. Play on Friends in Low Places. And the other one's called Money for NASA. Play on Money for Nothing. And as always, a many thank you, Mark Sargent. That's from Zane. Thank you, Zane. This one's called Survival Guide and Short Message. Hi, Mark. Just want to say you guys are all doing a fantastic job getting the message out there to research Flat Earth. Thank you for what you do. Have a great day. Best regards, Tabitha Kelly. You're very welcome, Tabitha. And I sent you a Survivor Guide and hope you never have to use it, but you might want to print it out. This one's called SpaceX. Are you kidding me? OMG, are you kidding me? Can you tell it's real because it looks so fake? There's one part during the rear camera shot of the dash and the helmet as the car is turning, but the lighting isn't changing from the sun on the helmet. You're totally right. No advertising, no patches, so the windows do not fog up from the temperature changes. The payload area isn't cold enough to keep the windows from fogging over. Clear glass, spotless paint. Are you kidding me? I think this is a knee-jerk reaction to Effie and they just messed up. Well, they just gave you and Jaren tons of content. Booked my hotel for Denver. 
That's from Ryan from the University of Truth. Thank you, Ryan. We still have time for a few more. This one's called Rocky Jones Space Ranger Full Movie 1954. If it pops up, Rocky lands his rocket ship at 2.15 in the movie. SpaceX lands the same way as Rocky Jones Space Ranger. Yep. Yeah, you'd think that physically it'd be impossible to land a rocket, even with pulse, th pulse thrust technology, which we don't have. That's straight out of the movie Battle of Los Angeles. Ugh, whatever. Not dealing with that. This one's called Downsizing. Bet you it's a movie reference. Mark, Matt Damon has a movie out called Downsizing. Have you ever heard or watched it? Yep, I have not watched it yet, but I'm going to. It talks about Antarctica and they live under a dome-like structure. I really thought it would be a funny movie, but it actually talks about how the world ends. If they are trying to tell us something, well, this is the movie. Wow, really? Because I thought it was a pure comedy. Now I'm going to have to download it and watch it. So if you guys haven't checked it out, let me know. If anyone's seen Downsizing, I'd love to, we'll love to get your take on it. This one's called Flights in the Southern Hemisphere. Hi, Mark. I've been watching the Flat Earth information with great interest and have to admit the information has the effect of making a person question everything in education as well as most of the Flat Earth proposals. My mind is wide open to either model at this stage. I found the attached following a quick search. However, I guess this does not prove anything. The distance in time seems correct. Uh, going by time and date .com at 500 miles an hour. Is there any other way of confirming if these flights happen? Best regards, John Rainbach from the UK. Uh, no. Well, no, I actually, I think most of the flights, those flights are real. It's just that, you, again, you the you can't confirm the routes. That's it. Now, I've, I've seen a whole bunch of people say that, that yeah, this ha these handful of flights over the oceans do exist, but you cannot confirm the routes. That's the biggest thing about them. This one's called Survival. Hi, Mark. Thanks for all your work. I would love to have your survival letter. Thanks kindly, S. Martin. You got it. It is sent. This one's called Heavy Lift Subaru. Interesting. Mark, what a joke. I was screaming at the screen. I think the tires were Michelin Pilot Super Sports, same as the famous Subarus. Oh, nice. Nice. He, he sent me a picture of his car. He's got one, one of the Flat Earth cars, Flat Earth license plates. And he was saying that the tires were just normal tires on that Tesla. Piece of crap. That was from Jim. Thanks, Jim. <clears throat> this one's called Space. I got a lot of emails about SpaceX when this thing actually happened. SpaceX Tesla Cam. Where's the moon? It's currently on the light side of the planet. Where's the moon in SpaceX? They are currently heading towards the sun and the moon is on the light side of the earth. They should be seeing a waxing moon. Absolutely right. Oh, there were so many things wrong with that SpaceX stuff. So many things. Hated it. This one's called Slim Pickens. Hi, Mark. I heard the snippet from Dr. Strangelove on Strange World 136. Made my day. You demand sincerely, Lane. I can, yeah, thanks, Lane. And I can't take credit for that. That was the, um, a guy that helps with my music. His name is Chip Baker. And he knows that I love movie sound bites interspliced with any type of music. And so he took Dr. Strangelove and cut it up and cho chose some really great clips and, and made a, a, a nice beat around it. And that's what I use for one of my, um, one of the songs when I do Strange World. This one's called Flat Horizon. Hi, Mark. I have a few questions. Firstly, if the horizon is flat, should we not be able to see as far as we want? For example, should we not be able to see Mount Everest from any point if there's no curvature? Secondly, the Flat Earth model shows the South Pole as all around us. However, why does a compass always point towards the South Pole as one point if it isn't a single point? Thirdly, if you do believe SpaceX is fake, what would you say about all the amateur videos of the takeoff? And lastly, a cliche question, what is the edge of Flat Earth and why have we not seen it? Thanks. Sorry for the long message. Too many questions and he's already on his way. It's in his head. Um, but I will answer the first one, which is... Um, if you can't, why can't we see like Japan from uh, California? And that's because of the atmosphere. That's the biggest thing. Remember, you are breathing uh, four parts nitrogen and one part oxygen, which compared to water, which is two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen. You're looking through basically a soup. You're, you're breathing what we consider to be transparent air. But really, it's it's actually got some density to it. It's got a thickness. And like looking uh, through a swimming pool, you're going to get distortion at the other end of the swimming pool. So uh, if you took out that atmosphere, if you could at find some way to turn this world into a vacuum, 
and of course the weather would be gone, yeah, I think you could see a very, very, very long distance if that was the case. The atmosphere is more or less a, um, a vision limiter, vision limitation device, something, whatever. All right, moving on. This one's called Flat Earth. Dear Mark Sargent, I live in the UK and watched your film about hiding God a couple of days ago. I was fascinated and would like to receive some more information from you in order to delve a little more. I have lots of questions, but before I start, I wanted to check that you're okay to answer them and also that I've got the right email address and person. In the meantime, I did a little checking on <coughs> excuse me, Al Biruni and drew a blank on two counts. Firstly, on the wiki page for him, it says a paragraph under the Indology Indology section, reference number 58, that he was inspired by the Indian scholars who believe that the earth must be globular. And also whilst looking at the image section of Al Biruni, I couldn't see any reference to a flat earth and I've sent a link below to a picture with title specifically related to how he discovered the earth was round 500 years before Galileo. Can you point me to your resources on this, please? And let me know if you're happy to continue any correspondence. Many thanks. Sincerely, Suzanne. And hopefully I wrote her back. I will try to send her a thing, though. Just in case. Every once in a while, I'll be like, hey, did I write you back and send you? Because it was obvious she hasn't gone to my main channel. She saw one of the mirrors that is out there. I've got a whole bunch of people that have mirrored my stuff. And some people are going, wow, you didn't do anything else but that one video, the Flat Earth Clues compilation video. It's like, no, done a few things out there. So go to my, my main channel, which is Mark K. Sargent. This one's called Just for Laughs. Oh, yeah, it was a guy who sent me a picture. He was actually having lunch with Eric Dubé. I go, wait, is that you with Eric? He goes, yes, I met him in Bangkok two months ago. Great. Fantastic. Which he'd actually leave Thailand once in a while. Because the drone the drone strikes. They're not allowed in Thailand. Okay, this one's called Yes, Thanks, Mark Survival Guide. Hit me, brother. Thanks, Steve from Vancouver. Yep, send a survival guide to him. This one's called Flat Earth Society. It says SpaceX Falcon Heavy launch was fake on Coast to Coast AM. Thought you might like this from Coast to Coast. And that was sent anonymously, but it was sent with hugs and kisses. So was it a woman or was it a man? I don't know. So yeah, yeah, there was a lot of people that were jumping. In fact, I got a call almost immediately once that SpaceX launch happened from a British newspaper that wanted me to comment on it. And I said it was a piece of crap. This one's called Flat Earth. Let's see if we can find a good one to end on. My name is Adam from England. I want to thank you for your videos on YouTube. My brother recently introduced me to the Flat Earth Theory. And I must say there is some riveting ideas. I will be doing more and more research. I've been to see David Icke last year. And he has some very interesting ideas too. Are you familiar with his work? Yes, I am. If not, you should look him up on YouTube. Anyway, I just watched your 10 steps video two, two hours long. was very open-minded. So uh, thanks and keep up the great work. Peace and love, Adam. Thank you, Adam. Uh, let's see. This one's called Elon Musk's Big Reveal. Please take a look. Spinning, 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 spinning. Oh, come on. Well, this is embarrassing. It's just, it's not doing anything. So we'll go backwards and then we'll go forwards. This one's called Flat Earth Music. Hey, Mark, big fan here. Thanks for everything you do. Here's another song I made. Hope you dig. That's from Chief Crow and the Flat Earthworms. Yeah, I'd love that stuff. His channel, <coughs> excuse me, that's what it's called. Chief Crow and the Flat Earth Earthworms. Great songs. They're copyrighted, but I mean, you can you can share them and, and do stuff. You won't get the nickels for them, but they're, they're fantastic songs. I, I love what he's doing with that stuff. Let's go back to that Elon Musk big reveal. Oh, okay, here it is. Hi, Mark, check it out. It is an interview with Elon as he asked about the Tesla car, as he was asked about the Tesla car in space. Go to seven minutes, 11 seconds, and his response at 7.30. My jaw just dropped when he says, you know it's real because it looks so fake. The most unscientific statement of the year. And you know what? That's the one we're going to end on because it's absolutely true. If I want you to remember anything, remember that Elon Musk comment. You've never heard that from anyone, I think, ever at NASA. And that is, you know it's real because it looks so fake. Even if he had worded it differently, it would have come off badly. But what he was trying to get at was the color palettes look completely wrong. And it looks like it was, it was staged. It looks like a visual studio slash Photoshop thing. And so he was covering. That's all he was doing. He'd say, well, it looks fake, but it's absolutely, it's so fake, it looks real, basically. 
awful, terrible, terrible. So if you guys get a chance, uh, the there's so many different points we could go off in the SpaceX thing. Uh, we'll, we'll save that for another time. Thank you to everybody who is uh, who have sent me emails so far to msergeant23 at comcast.net, including the, the grammar person who is trying to fix my pronunciation of words. I get those from time to time. And don't forget, I will do, uh, if, I, if I can't read them here, sometimes I'll, I'll sneak in a few emails on Strange World, which is, which is on Truth Frequency Radio. Until next time, guys, stay flat.